Hey, we're about to start the third turn of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournaments Zytal Leg 2, the second game in Zytal Leg, which is a combination game of Chrononauts and U.S. Patent Number 1. Uh, so we're, we've had, we have two turns in our belt, which is not very much, but I thought uh, I might as well start the turn with just giving kind of an overview on how everyone's doing. Uh, with the knowledge, the caveat, that we don't know whose people's um, secret ID is, which is basically their secret goal. DJ told you over there. Alright, so let's take a look. This is our time mechanic here. He um, doesn't have a horse in the game. He, though I might, I might track how much money he gets, because that could be interesting to know. Uh, so we'll start from the right and move left here. We'll start with TD, who's the first in the future, and as we could expect with the rules that we have for this game. He has the most, I believe, of these patch cards here. Uh, whether that any of those are helpful to his secret goal or not, we don't know. What we do know is that he doesn't have any upgrades to his time machine, and so he has that disadvantage. Moving backward in time, we have Nun, who was our high scorer in the last game these five played together, uh, of Kronos. Um, she has three cards, which is decent decent amount. That's only one less than TD. She was next. She was pretty close to him in the future. And then she also has a fairly significant upgrade. This um, power upgrade will add nine to her total power. So she has 14 total power. That gives her a lot more leeway in terms of picking up other upgrades for her ship. The fact that she also has the most money means that I would say just, I, I have an I'm just kind of thinking about this as I'm talking, that she probably has the advantage right now. Um, going backward in time, we see um, Oblio, he has one item. Uh, Desi has another item. That's helpful. But uh, Oblio has some cards. Desi doesn't have any patch cards yet. He's been too far in the past. And poor DJ Double J, she hasn't been lucky enough to get any upgrades yet or any patch cards. It's still pretty early in the game, though, so things can change. Uh, we'll start the, the card draft for turn three. So only so only TD and Nun were able to get uh, patch cards this time around. It then went uh, it went out of turn order. Our, our starting turn order was going this way, but then it, uh, when we when we do the patch card uh, draft, it goes by uh, where they are in time. And and at the time, DJ Double J, she was the next in the past. Unfortunately, she lost out yet again. We had established the pattern that the first three people to to take patch cards would get them. That pattern did not bear out this time. Uh, another bummer for DJ Double J. So what she did in response was she stopped the assassination of John F. Kennedy, which um, created two paradoxes. Desi went all the way from the past to um, the year 1929 when the crash of the stock market, not to not to um, to invest or anything like that, but to um, get Monahan steam locomotive. He put that there. That's a pretty big uh, piece of equipment. That's going to take up most of his power. He he has Cobb's electric label maker, if you recall from last time. It gives him total 10 power. That takes 9, but he gets to add 5 to his movement roll now. That's going to be huge. He has a lot more mobility than anyone else. Um, next person being Oblio with a, a plus 2 to his roll. So that's pretty huge for Desi. Uh, he's in a weak, uh, in, in, a, in a vulnerable spot, however. Um, someone could turn the stock market into paradox and then he would lose both of his things. It's always a risk uh, leaving the leaving the safety of the linchpins. Not to be beat by Desi, Oblio just did him two better. He got Zoltan, Zor or sorry, uh, Zorba's Voltan pump. That's a power of 11. That's huge. That's, uh, I, I think I say that word too, too often, huge. But that gives him a total of 16 power. Uh, his, his chassis only takes 4, so he still has 12 more power to use on weapon and shields. So that's going to make Oblio a rather scary individual indeed. Nun just picked up Toivo's portable computer. That means... Um, most people have two upgrades in the game, so those two that don't uh, are severely behind in the, the time machine upgrading race. I'm getting exhausted. It's been a turn of upgrades. TD just got Mura's Iron, iron Windlass. Uh, he had to go to the future, so he's the first person to go into the far future there. It cost him 15 for that piece of equipment. I hope it's worth it. That's a lot of power, though, so he's got a 15 power potential right now. I almost forgot we need to move the time mechanic. We got a four. One, two, three, four. He's, uh, he's there on the day when uh, Garfield died. The patch draft is still 
uh, averaging at the at three. Four of the five players were able to get patches that time, and most importantly, DJ Double J was one of them. I was starting to feel bad for her. She she doesn't have any upgrades yet, nor does she have did she have any patch cards. But now she has one patch card, so we can we can feel a bit of relief for her. Another reason to feel good for DJ Double J, she just obtained this card here. It's few. Few Fuzznull's Serial Cooling Fans. I really should read these to myself before I read them to you. But that's going to give her sig significant power, too. So we're seeing a lot of power cards coming up early on in this game. I think everyone now has a power upgrade, which is excellent for them. Because TD put that card face up, Oblio is having to pay seven money, seven golds, in order to get this Miller's Grappling Crank. He's now the second player to have a weapon. I didn't uh, document this, but Desi just got Benson's Long Shot Revolver as well. So we're going to start to see some blood. Um, moreover, we are seeing that the, the people are outfitting their, their time machines rather quickly. Uh, so it's it's going to be a race for patching, I think. However, you know, the upgrades, they're, they're a lot more um, vulnerable than... Uh, than the patches, I think, in some respect. Because all you have to do is paradox the person, and they lose all of their upgrades. But I guess that's e that's easier said than done. You know, if they stick to the linchpins, then they're okay. But they have to leave the linchpins in order to patch things, so then they're in trouble. After Nunn reassassinated John F. Kennedy with, I guess, this, this kind of gun thing here, um, TD just made a huge purchase in the far future. He got Galela's Nuclear Dwarf digger. Now, um, in U.S. patent number one, this is, I think, the only card I made a special rule for in, uh, so far. U.S. patent num and I actually did this ahead of time because I remember this card. U.S. patent number one, the game, uh, the dwarf digger lets you go anywhere on the board. That, that seems a little um, outsized in terms of power for this game because the board is much larger, I believe. So I changed it so you get to roll four dice, which seemed to kind of scale with the other um, cards that let you, that the other chassis that increased your move. So he's going to roll four dice now, and he gets to move by four dice. Uh, he's down to one buck, though, unfortunately. So, you know, you can get, you can spend a lot of cash in the future, but the money-making opportunities you got to have an in investment in the past. Let's see what he gets. That's seven, twelve, thirteen spaces. He's, he doesn't need as much money because he's not going to need to do the, the vertical movement as much anymore. And it's time to move the time mechanic. He gets to go eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's moving ahead in time. Now soon he's going to maybe stop moving ahead in time if he starts to pass these people. Um, yeah, he would need to pass two more people in order to stop moving ahead in time. And after DJ Double J just rescued, once again, John F. Kennedy from uh, Nunn's Bullet this time, um, Desi, he went and killed Adolf Hitler. Probably the, the biggest biggest uh, piece of catharsis in this game is being able to do that. Um, probably a big winner in a lot of people's eyes when they play Chrononauts is the, the ability to, to, to do that. Um, and then also to, to have that discussion, would you go back and kill Adolf Hitler when he was a baby or not? Do you not like babies? Oblio took DJ Double J's bait. She had put this card here knowing that he had a thing for turned over cards. Turned out it was a monkey wrench, which is not a bad thing. It's just not something he wants to use right now. He has Miller's grappling crank. He likes that much better than a monkey wrench. Another bit of catharsis in this game, Nunn just halted the um, the George W. Bush uh, presidency of the United States of America, after which time T.D. went back to um, 1957 and checked out the, the latest, this, this fashion here, this Marshall's Invisibility Field uh, dress. He's not going to don it, however. He's going to wave at the camera and say, Hi, I'm T.D. We're about to have our first attack of the game. Uh, the attacker here in this case is Desi. After just uh, shooting Adolf Hitler, he was debating. He was debating whether or not to um, then go off and shoot John F. Kennedy or to shoot um, TD. He went with TD partially because um, yeah, something about TD that he doesn't like, and also because TD is actually an opponent, and so it makes more sense to him to shoot TD. So he. 
let's see, this green die will be TD's defensive die, and he gets to add the two from his shield here. For those of you who don't know US Pat number one, Desi only has one on his long shot revolver, but he gets to roll two dice because he's an attacker. That's the attacker's prerogative. So we'll roll it all in one dice. Red and white is Desi, again, and the green is TD. And looks like, ooh, that's, TD just got cream. So now Desi is going to get to destroy because he beat him by over five, right? He gets to destroy any one of TD's die. Or, it, not die, sorry, any one of his upgrades. So what does he want to destroy? Does he want to destroy the Mura's Iron Windlass or the Galela's Nuclear Dwarf Digger? He doesn't want to destroy the Space Helmet necessarily. That doesn't really appeal to him. Um, hmm. I think, I mean, I'm going to have to consult with Desi. I know what I would do, but I don't know if Desi would necessarily do what I would do. Hang on. And Desi went with the Dwarf Digger, which is a, a, a frontal assault to TD's movement capability. Desi likes that he's able to move the furthest, and he was a little slighted by the fact that TD was able to move farther than him with his four dice. So, ah. Uh... And Oblio is getting on the pick on TD wagon. He's using the Miller's grappling crank. On a five or six, that's going to steal an item from TD. Which is rough. Now why are they doing this? Well, <laughs> I I think for Desi it was partially convenience. Um, Oblio has something in mind here what, that he wants to do. He has something in particular he wants to take. So we'll, we'll roll that. If it works, it does not. He got a three. That's not five, nor is it six. Nana is about to do some patching. I think this is our first patching in the game. It's the capture of Osama bin Laden here in 2003. What that's going to do under my rules, in the in the regular game of Chrononauts, um, patching a time period is nice because one, it, it, it can help you reach your goal. Some of the goals require certain patches. It also um, keeps the, the, the fabric of time, space-time, from unraveling. If you have too many paradoxes, everyone loses. It also um, lets you draw another card. Now you have a certain, uh, essential, essentially a hand limit in chrono Chrononauts because you're drawing one and playing one every turn. So if you get to draw a bonus one, you're going to, um, over time, get have more cards to work with, which can be very useful. In my, in, in this combination, that's not the case because they can, you know, they can just keep drawing cards. Um, I think when this deck runs out, I might have it so that they start forgetting, like they have to start discarding cards, and maybe, you know, if this game had, if this combination had some more development, it might be good to have a hand limit. But, in any case, uh, instead of doing that, uh, she gets another turn. Uh, that's, that's her bonus. And what she's going to do is she's going to look at some patch cards here, and choose one. She's hypothesizing. Uh, TD is return attacking Desi. He doesn't have a weapon, but I'm just going to say he can do it anyway. So it's going to be two dice against one die. The red die is Desi's, the white die are TD. And he tied him, so he got nothing out of that. Then he's going to move over here, patch this, Vietnam Peace Accord sign. That's going to give him another uh, turn. I, I ruled that patches don't cost an action. Just having another card is enough. So he's going to move yet again. And unfortunately, he only got a one, so he used his last coin, his last gold coin, to uh, go and stop the Sabotage the Manhattan Project. Just trying to trying to stay away from Desi, I think. Uh, trying to escape and cause a little bit of havoc in his path. He noticed Desi was going forward in time, so he thought if he could jump back, Desi would leave him alone. And I'll leave you for the moment with this overview of the entire map. You can see how the timeline is looking. A lot of activity uh, in the future area. Or not really, I guess not future to us, but the future the future side of things. Uh, the, the mid to, to, yeah, the mid middle 20th century, I guess, is where most of the action is taking place. You can see with the paradoxes and the people and all of that. Oh, I did forget to move the, the time mechanics, so let's do that now. Ooh, another big 11. That's his second 11 in a row. I think the last 11, though, I didn't get on camera. I made an error. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, wait. He can't just keep going. One, two, three, four, 
five. I think he stops. He'll, he, no, he would stop at Desi because Desi's the middle point. All right. So, yeah, I made an error. Sometimes I, I accidentally leave the camera running or I don't push the button enough. So then when I push it again to start filming, it actually stops the filming. I think that's what happened. So um, definitely enjoying the game still. I think the, the test will be the, the end, how it ends, whether it's just like goes on and on and on or whether it has like a good satisfying conclusion. Um, if you recall, I don't know if you watched the game, um, Empire Make History on Your Living Room Floor, but it could have an end like that where it just kind of keeps going because it's so hard to seal the deal. We'll see though, next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament, Side Tail Leg 2, the first American Chrononaut.